Hey everyone, it's Malkyrian. Today I am going to walk you through the setup for making a digital clock display on your Minecraft server using my new plugin, Clock Display, which is an extension of Redstone Chips. Um, first off, a little bit of preliminaries. So you can see these are seven segment digits and they are numbered in clockwise order. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, or A through G. I prefer the letters. Um, you can see in the back, these are redstone chips pixel circuits. And I'll get into a little bit more detail with those later after I set up the other circuits. Um, so anyway, let's get to it. <coughs> now, the first thing that we'll need is a clock. And, and by this I mean the pulse clock that you can get. Um, And this is automatic. It triggers itself and sets out a pulse every period of whatever you decide to tell it. Um, personally, I find that 800 is the best setting for this to get even uh, digit change between the hours and the minutes. So for those of you who are somewhat new to redstone chips the iron blocks are the inputs and the gold blocks are the outputs by default and the levers are what provide the outputs inputs can take levers they can take redstone going into them it doesn't really matter for the clock it's just a little bit more uh, advantageous to have it be a lever because you can just hit it and it'll go and hit it again and it'll stop so you got the clock there. The next thing is the daytime circuit. This takes one input and it takes the input from that clock and it has for the hours it has five outputs. Now this is basic binary. Um, the first binary bit covers value 0 and 1. If you add a second bit you can get anywhere from 0 to 3 because this one adds 2 and 3. Now this one doubles that and gives you up to 7. This one again doubles and goes up to 15 and this one goes up to 31. There's 32 possible values but it's 0 index. So because 24 hour mode has 24 values we need to have the possibility of getting 24 in binary form. Now the sign argument, I will be telling you first how to do game time. You do daytime, game time on the second line, and on the third line you put hour and right click to activate it. Um, the next one is the declock circuit, and that's what I call my circuit in clock display. It takes the five outputs directly from um, directly from daytime and has eight outputs. Oops. This first output over here is the clock output. And what that does is it actuates the seg drivers. Two through five here are the ones digit values. And we need four because this only handles zero through seven and it goes up to nine. Well, it goes up to eight. So we need 
one more pin in order to get all those values. And then over here, we have, this is the blanking pin for the, for the tens. And what that means is, any time the tens is zero, it doesn't display any digits at all. The segments are all blank. And then this, of course, is one, and this is two. Um, now, the arguments for D clock are as such. You put D clock on the first line. On the second line, you put game time. And for now, we'll leave it as 12 hours, so you can leave the third line blank. You can activate that. And then over here, we have the seg drivers. These, this first one for the minutes, takes five inputs directly from the first five inputs, first five outputs of D clock. Oops. Like so. And each seg driver has seven outputs makes sense because there are seven segments for the digit. And again, it's from A to G, or 1 to 7. <coughs> now, you can go over here and take the clock here. You see the clock? Each seg driver needs a clock but we don't have a clock output pin up here. So what we do is over here, we take another little output and we make a transmitter. And for this one, I'm going to do H clock. Makes it nice and easy to remember. Go ahead and activate that. <coughs> and then I take it over here and I make a receiver. Just put a gold block down put one of these on top of it, and then receiver, H clock. And now we have that one clock pin controlling two seg drivers. It's a little bit simpler in coding, a little bit more difficult in practice. So I'll come over here put the outputs on this other seg driver. There we go, put the levers on. Now, for a seg driver, this, for the tens, we need to come over here and see this one, this is the blanking pin. And so, you, what we need is the seg driver and blank pin on there. And that'll take the first input as a clock, the second input as the blanking pin where it doesn't display any segments, and then the values one and two. Okay, come over here. Oh, this seg driver needs to be labeled. And this one is just seg driver. Simple enough, right? We can activate that. Now I'll come over here and I'll show you what exactly it's doing. That makes daytime update. Oops. Which in turn sends the full value to D clock, which sends ones values and tens values. And then over here, these are other transmitters. And these go into the pixel circuits that I showed you a little bit earlier. They transmit on a channel, which the pixels can then receive and adjust their values accordingly. Um, yeah, these are already activated. I can show you how they're done. You can see these ones, I labeled them HT for hours tens. Let me come over here. Make seven more. I don't want to forget the redstone. It's kind of useless without it. Then on to the other side. 
transmitter H A. And you always want to go left to right on this. A. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Stupid sign. H A. There we go. And so it'll be H A H B. All the way down to HG. Okay. F and finally transmitter HG. Go ahead and activate those. Okay. And now we can go back to the big clock. And you'll see the hours are now updating. It is 6 in the morning on the game. Um, at night, you can see nighttime actually starts at about 7.45 game time.